So I guess this exhibition begins with a coalescence around the distrust of image. And already that is evident in the treachery of the diptych title of the show. You have two titles, The Almost Horse and Third Moment Profile. So already in the sort of like the semantic language used in Almost Horse, you know, the suggestion is that um, the horse is not evident. So there is a kind of tripartite example of hoarseness evident here in the exhibition. The first um, imagistic example in the wallpaper of the very legible horse here, um, a more kind of economical diagrammatic horse um, <coughs> depicted with this large structure. And then the narrative horse, which the text accompanying the panels is um, depicted in the narrative of the story, which is also titled The Almost Horse. And then the second title, Third Moment Profile, is a more kind of um, ambiguous metaphorical title that has its roots in the um, engineering terminology that went into building the large structure here, but um, is also used as um, a beautiful metaphor for kind of transforming those three attempts at naming or depicting the horse and imagining that this moment profile is a kind of uh, metaphorical existence for the different ways in which we behave with or name substance. The horse in the wallpaper is dropped into an environment that simulates um, the architectural features of this space here at Davy Street. So the, the lighting rig and the proportions of the space are simulating the space that we're standing in albeit with some structural perspectival tricks. So the, um, the linear moments in which the walls and the ceiling meet one another have been tweaked um, in, in CGI space such that it only really works on a dark day or at night, but when you're standing outside of the gallery and looking through the glass into the exhibition, um, an optical trick is performed such that the very back wall elongates into a huge rectangle. So there are 26 panels in the exhibition, um, one for each letter of the alphabet, so a full A to Z. Each one of the panels depicts a text, and I set myself the sort of structural task of writing a story that every consecutive paragraph of that story would begin with the next consecutive letter of the alphabet. As you move through this, the hope is that you understand that there is a sort of chronology um, moving both with the unfolding of the narrative, but also with this sort of seasonal cycling through the letters. And as you move through it, the leaves begin to fall and every time a leaf is dropped. So by the time you've reached Z, you've finished a sort of full um, seasonal flush as well as ending the narrative. Each painting, um, depicts an image through a window. Um, and this window-like structure, which is sort of very um, diagrammatic and geometric in its form, is taken from multiple snapshots of a physical model that was made in the studio. Um, the idea being that this sort of romantic view through the window, which depicts the kind of conventional scenescape of sky, sea, trees, banal domestic scenario, but the way in which it was captured from this model is replicating a technique that was used by um, very early Disney animations, and um, it's called multi-plane animation. And so images were literally painted onto glass in a very analog format, and multiple sheets of glass were laid one on top of another on a huge machine, a huge rotary machine. and. Um, Somebody would stand and turn the wheel, and another camera operator would sit at the top of this multiplane construction and photograph images. So the idea was that it would be the first time a parallax effect could be created in animation, meaning that perspective and rotation were possible using only two-dimensional images. Um, so this scenescape is kind of using a similar technique to depict a obsessively banal scene through a window, and the idea is similar to the chronology of the alphabet unfolding and the story unfolding, as though you're fractionally moving your head from side to side and you kind of capture a slight differential moment through that window. Um, and every now and again, the treachery of that simulation is unfolded because you see that the architecture of the window frame and the structure in which it is housed is revealed. So you sort of see this model-like scenario um, 
And I suppose that's another motif of the show, the metaphor of architecture as communication. So of course, this gigantic horse structure here, which is both sort of diagrammatic, tent-like, enclosing, authoritative, toy-like, sort of suggests all of these um, characteristics of obfuscation and kind of like um, enclosure. So it, similar in a way to Odysseus's Trojan horse. And of course, the Trojan horse of a motif has become a kind of contemporary emblem for how we insert kind of micro-violences into an everyday scenario, in a sense. The story itself um, also depicts a horse of sorts, and it is almost a, a love story between three characters, and those three characters might as well be sort of figurative ciphers for, again, this language image structure construct of the show. There is a horse, there is a farmer, and there is a stranger. And the question of the horse, um, the horse, in a sense, is an arbitrary vehicle. And I just wanted to use an image that was a familiar kind of iconographic classical image that is both a conveyance of power, obsession, sort of history, um, love, metaphor, um, myth mythology, and how that motif could then change and become a kind of a vehicle for all of these other unfoldings. The steeped importance of the metaphor of the Trojan horse as well, um, and the idea that um, something sort of ingenious folly and the construction of a bizarre facade ultimately allows something to slip into a conventional scenario and then behave differently or unfold different content or um, mobilize another way of understanding the things that sit around it. And I guess that brings us back to this kind of beginning idea of the, the treachery of image and how, you know, in a world where we are continually bombarded by a very hypersaturated world of image and text, you know, what it means to sort of know that what you are being presented with is a declarative distrust of image.